Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today I've got something a little different to show you. It's an air blaster with no bottle and no remote line. This is the Spex Fire LPA. Now, the main difference between HPA and LPA is the pressure of the air, of course. HPA builds start with air already compressed, say in a paintball bottle, whereas LPA builds start with room pressure air and build that up with a compressor or a pump of some kind to the pressures that we want to fire the dart. This is a Spex BZ mod of the Sledge Fire, singled for short darts. The internals are similar to any HPA build you might do, only here the air comes from a Xiaomi mini compressor. It has its own internal power source and is rechargeable via USB. It's got an adjustable PSI uh, setting that will cut out when it reaches the, uh, the pressure that you've selected. I've got it held in place with this thick rubber strapping, keeping it nice and firm. At the moment, I've got a six inch 17 30 seconds brass barrel fitted into the Blaster Tech single shell. Blaster Tech scar up front, of course. This length I found is pretty good for around 150 FPS, but all I need to do is swap out for 12 inches of brass and that'll be good for 250, 300 FPS and beyond, just by dialing up the pressure on the compressor. Right, let's have a look inside. Okay, so to start with, none of these internal pieces I'm going to need. I'll put those all aside. So that's your plunger, spring, priming bars and whatnot. I will need to keep the plunger tube, mostly for this interface piece, which will press against the Blaster Tech sledge fire shell. And when that sits in the front here, that will seal like so. So that seals good. I'll need sort of the outer part of that. I can cut away the inside. I won't need the smart AR because this is this will be singled for short darts only. So yep, this front piece I'll need to keep, I'll need to use. Uh, 17 30 seconds brass. Of, as per usual, that'll be glued in place sort of about there. Enough room for a short dart to be inserted and just go inside the brass. So probably about that far. And then, of course, the Blaster Tech scar up front for accuracy. So that can all be done uh, later. Inside the shell itself. So there's this internal piece that holds the plunger and all the different locks and primary pieces and the trigger. Now, I will need some of this, but not all. So I'll cut this up. What I will need is the part that holds the trigger in place and maybe some of this section that holds the plunger tube itself though. I'll see how I go with that. So that'll get some work done. The front barrel release, that's as per usual. So I'll, I'll keep that exactly as it is. I've removed some pieces down here because that attaches to the priming bar. So I don't need that. Very important to keep that tack rail knob. Uh, all right, so otherwise no change needed to the front. That's gonna work just as per usual. Um, now, this is the Spex BZ, it's version two, uh, of course, but that's fine. It works uh, perfectly well. So these bits aren't to scale yet. I'll cut the, the, the six mil hose as I need it. So this was just to, uh, to demonstrate the concept. The MJV03 valve will sit somewhere down here and be actioned by the trigger. It's part of the reason I need to cut some of this away. The Spex BZ part of the tank will sit somewhere around here, but inside 
doesn't quite fit inside the original plunger tube just a little too thick for that so um, yeah I'll probably just glue in place this front piece which has a few clips holding it otherwise that'll sit sort of about there then I may not use this exact configuration I'll see how things fit down here uh, but at the bottom let me just show you this piece so this is a female 1 8 thread to 6 mil push fit the Gree brand and this piece here where you can see a bit of uh, Teflon tape holding it in place is a male 1 8 BSP thread to a Schrader valve so I found this one on, on eBay from an Australian supplier um, yeah I haven't used one of these before but we'll see how it goes and that's going to be that's going to fit somewhere down in the handle here below where you where you hold the grip now what that's going to do is allow me to attach my mini compressor which screws on like so then So as you can see, a few seconds to bring the pressure up to, in this case, 30 PSI. That's adjustable. I can go up or down as need be. So I'll obviously work out the FPS and set the PSI that I need for a specific game. Uh, and in those few seconds that the tank is refilling, that's when obviously I'll flip the front down and uh, load the new dart in place. So that's the plan for, the, for this. And the compressor itself, which of course contains a um, lithium battery power supply inside, I'm going to fit into the stock. So it's about as thick as this, so I'm going to cut away as much as I need to here. So most of this zombie strike piece will keep this bottom rail. Plan is to fit this. So it's held firmly there. Buttons available on the left side. And then the hose will swing around and connect to the Schrader valve end that'll be sticking out maybe at right angles like that. So that's the plan. Okay, here's an update. I've started off with the plunger tube and I've cut it off just in line with where these clips end. These are, I think it's glued in place there. But the plunger tube has these little nubs on either side that fit into the slots in the shell. And that, the, and that whole thing will keep the front part of the plunger tube exactly aligned so I thought I want to keep those what I've done is this coupling piece at the front of the Specs BZ I've cut away this piece holds the smart AR system uh, normally so I've cut away the exact right shape so I'm not sure if you can see in there but the front coupler piece of the Spex BZ sits just inside that plastic I've cut away so I know that's exactly aligned so I can fit that in place and I'll know when I slot this in with the nubs in these slots that'll be uh, really well aligned 
uh, so that'll help hold the Specs BZ solid. Oh, there's a screw post here. Need to cut away a bit here, I think. Um, but that's only an internal one, not for the external shell. So, and that, I should then still have enough space for the trigger, for the MJV03 valve to sit somewhere down here with a bit of hose joining them. So that's the first thing I've done with the front of the plunger tube. The other thing I've done is cut a piece of 9 16 brass. That's the inner diameter of this coupling piece. So I can epoxy a short bit of 9 16 brass in there. And this bit where the air restrictor sits, I've cut away the inside so that's exactly 9 16 too. So I can glue a piece of 9 16 brass inside the coupler piece. That will slide over like so. And I've got the outside of the coupling piece fitted into the plaster I cut away. The 9 16 brass fitted in here. And then I'll cut that to length so it's just exactly in line with the tip of this, tip of the, uh, the plunger tube not protruding obviously like that uh, and then these little gaps on either side I might fill those up with uh, hot glue all right so I've just uh, glued that in place now that'll take a few days to cure so I'll actually come back to the internals later what I'm going to do now is get working on this stock piece so like I said cutting away most of the inside here. And having it so that the hose can reach around sort of like that. So, goodbye zombie strike. Uh, let's see if we can get rid of you. Okay, so here's where I'm up to with the stock now. It's very empty, as you can see. So I've ground down that far on the rear end and uh, sort of cut away and ground down that far at the front end to make a bit of space down here. And now this little compressor fits pretty neatly inside. There's a bit cut away there for the hose. And so yeah, that fits really well. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to secure it in here. I don't think I want to glue it, um, but maybe I'll use some Velcro around it uh, to help keep it uh, firm when in use, but still be able to remove it when I don't need it. Uh, or to charge it, I guess. The charging port is at the bottom here, so uh, that'll be necessary. So, yeah, maybe Velcro straps will hold that in like that. But anyway, that's uh, in place pretty nicely. Now, that's going to, well, so the stock's going to fit in like that. Then thinking I will have this hose come around like so and if I have the Schrader valve out uh, coming out around about here that can attach like so and then it won't be in the way of right-handed use. Holding it like that that hose will be um, out of the way for a right-hander, which uh, will suit me, suit me just fine. All right, so that's um, that's pretty good progress. I'm happy with that. All right, so I have made some progress on this shell cutting. So on each side, I've ground out this molding here. Same on the other side here. So what I can do 
when I'm happy with uh, where everything's located is in line with these ribs, just put a bit of tape around the Spixby's E to build it out so they can provide some additional stability. So this is how the, you can see the 9 16 brass that's glued in place there. I haven't yet filled this up with hot glue. And these two little nubs will fit into these slots. So that seems pretty good. So that's uh, all sitting together quite nicely. Maybe I need another millimetre, but everywhere the screw posts are is fine. And if I put the front barrel attachment in like so, Seems pretty good. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Maybe a tiny bit of shaving for some fine, fine tuning, but uh, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how that sits. Okay, it's been a few days and I've gotten some good work done. One thing I did was my original plan was to have the airline coming in sort of in line down here somewhere so the hose would be like that but since found that that was i thought it was going to eat up too much of this uh, molding here so i went and got a right angle female 1 8 to 6 mil push fit piece and what that's allowed me to do is to have the air coming in at the side of the hand grip. So I'll show you how that goes together a little bit later, but that's been part of the delay. But in the meanwhile, I've managed to keep nearly all of the uh, this internal framework, scaffolding, skeleton, whatever you might call it. And so I've kept this part to hold the Specs BZ, uh, so just a bit of tape there to pad out to the right, the right size. And then I've cut through here and here a bit. So the MJVO3 sits sort of about like that. The trigger in its normal place then activates the valve button. Uh, so that was pretty good. So there's various points around this framework that slot into different parts of the shell. So by keeping that, hopefully that'll keep the internals uh, a bit more stable, a bit more secure. So now when we slot that in like so, it fits in at various points. You can see there's one post here that I've ground down. So it still slots in whole and stops it from moving, but it's more or less flush with the inside of this part. Same thing on the other side, obviously cutting away for the back of the Specs BZ, and then just making space on the inside for the MG V03. Now that fits in like so. The trigger also. And you can see here we've got the inlet for the air coming in. Uh, just a really short piece of six millimeter hose between these two push fits. That'll be tricky to uh, undo if I ever need to. 
uh, and then the top part just uses three of the original clips to slot in place and then when the left shell goes in place it also has mouldings that hold this half of the inner frame in place so it's nice and secure. So that's really good. All I need to do then is uh, slot in the release for the front barrel, the front barrel itself. Oh, and then the stock. And as you can see that hose is out of the way uh, and I'm holding the grip normally. Uh, this plaster is not for left-handers obviously, sorry left-handers. And of course I forgot the tack rail piece. So uh, yeah okay I'll go ahead and uh, screw this all together. We'll see how it looks with the, uh, with the compressor in place. one screw left over which makes sense because this was a screw hole right there. Okay the other bits I've got is Blaster Tech sledge fire insert so this is for 1732 brass which I've glued in place that epoxy is still drying actually it's a three day stuff uh, and I've glued that sort of about that far in so when you load a dart it'll sit just inside the start of the brass, which I used a reaming tool and uh, made a nice sh smooth chamfer so darts will load in nicely from this side. And of course that will that will stay in place like that. And then of course a Blaster Tech 1730 seconds Mark II scar and that'll slot on the end. I won't fix that in place just yet. Uh, might do some experimenting, might need to cut the length shorter depending on what my uh, FPS is like. So that works nicely. The compressor then one just screws onto here and that sits in the stock like this. Uh, one thing I found is stock is quite wobbly as you'd expect. It um, doesn't have any of this plastic holding it in place so it's fairly narrow down the bottom here. What I think I'll do is get some cohesive bandage to wrap around sort of that way and that way uh, to hold it sort of firmly like this when it's in use. Um, cohesive bandage I can undo and redo uh, as I need to. Alright so I'm going to take out So I'll remove the barrel, as I said the glue is still curing that, uh, but in the meanwhile we can prove this works. So So that's about three or four seconds to get us up to 30 psi. I don't know if that's going to be the um, operating pressure that I want to use um, for super stock or ultra stock or NIC level events. That'll come with a bit of testing. But if, for example, I wanted to go up to 50 psi, uh, it'll obviously take a few seconds longer. I 
goes about five seconds. So as you can see, it's uh, probably about one second per 10 psi to uh, to fill. Uh, so this won't be a, a fast uh, rate of fire blaster, uh, but obviously the loading mechanism of dropping the front barrel, loading a dart, closing up, it takes a few seconds anyway. So uh, it'll be a bit of fun. Uh, okay, next thing is once this glue is cured in a few days, um, I'll get some FPS readings and do a firing demo and we'll see how it goes in practice and uh, if I need to adjust the barrel length I'll do that then. Okay so here we go with the LPA bottle on sledge fire. So I've got 30 centimeters of 17 30 seconds brass glued into the Blaster Tech uh, shell, single shell. Uh, Blaster Tech scar on the end as usual and I've got some pro darts in my pocket. So the way it works is dial up the pressure here. So starting with 20. Hit the button as you're loading your dart in and Two forty six at twenty PSI. I'll drop it down to fifteen and see how we go. Not sure if that comes through. Well, that's still uh, pretty neat. I'll drop it down to 10. Try that out. Right, I think uh, I think this is a little bit inaccurate at low PSI. There were some shots there that were 200, some were barely over 100. That was at 10 PSI. I think I might aim for operating at maybe 15 PSI and shorten this barrel down, uh, aiming for 150 FPS at that PSI, and then for higher uh, FPS events, I can just bump up the pressure further there. But uh, Proof of concept, that's a uh, pretty neat result I think. I'm happy with that. Okay, I've now cut down this barrel to six inches. That should be long enough for anyone. So uh, everything else is the same and 15 PSI, got some nice ECs. Let's see how we go. All right, I think that's the uh, right length for super stock games with the 150 FPS cap. And then all I need to do is uh, get a second shell, have a full 30 centimeters of brass barrel. And uh, this is great for high FPS uh, events. Um, going up to 250, 300 FPS or more. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with this, quite a success. Here I am 50 feet from the target, now using the 6 inch barrel and 15 psi. The 
this angle gives you a good idea of the reload process. So hit the button as you're grabbing a dart and the rest is just the normal sledge fire action. As you can see it only takes a second or so to reach 15 psi so most of the time it's ready to fire before I've completed that reloading action. I'm really pleased with the accuracy here. I think this blaster will be quite fun to run in our single shot rounds at super stock wars. And now I'm back to 100 feet. You can see I've got the 12 inch brass barrel in place and I've upped the pressure to 45 psi. I'm using ACC 3 darts here. I did have a few decaps so uh, I'd be interested in testing with some Nexus Pro darts that I've got on order. Hopefully they'll be a bit more consistent. I think that one dropped well short. And let's see if I can get this last dart on target. Nice. So there you have it. That's the Specs Fire LPA, a Specs BZ mod of the Nerf Sledgefire, powered by an onboard battery powered mini compressor. I hope you've enjoyed this build video. Please leave any questions and comments below. I took a lot of inspiration from the MTB uh, XBZ mod of the Sledge Fire from a couple of years back. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.